you've probably heard the term London broil. Well, London broil is not a cut of meat. Usually it's a top round cut. It's just marketed as London broil. It's a generally lean cut of meat and can end up being a little bit tough at times. So for my take on London broil today, without any broiling, I'm gonna be marinating it and then smoking it out on the Weber kettle. First thing we need to do is get the rub ready that we're gonna use on this top round. We're gonna add a tablespoon of pepper, a half a teaspoon of a lemon pepper, a teaspoon of hickory smoked salt, a teaspoon of paprika. We're just gonna mix this up. If you don't have hickory smoked salt, you can use any salt you want. I just made this hickory smoked salt and I'll put a link in the video description uh, for that video. So if you want to try making hickory smoked salt or any smoked salt, you can. Let's give this a quick taste. That, that'll do it. Let's get our top round seasoned. So this is about a two pound top round and it's really typical to what you'll see marketed in the stores as London broil. First thing I want to do is I want to help tenderize this a little bit and open up the inside of the meat to a little bit of flavoring. So I'm just going to be using a little tenderizer here gonna run it over the meat, put some holes in it. We're not pounding this out, we're just creating passages for the flavor to get in. Let's flip it over, get the other side. Now it's time to get it in our seasoning and marinade. So I have the top round in a sort of flat Pyrex dish here. You can use any container you want, even Ziploc bags. Now I'm just gonna add some red wine vinegar to this. No real measurement, but it probably no more than two or three tablespoons. Just gonna rub that in, turn this over in here, and then turn it back over. Now we're just gonna add our seasoning. Just gonna sprinkle all over the top here. Kind of rub it in and we're going to turn it over same thing to the other side now you can let this marinade in the refrigerator for about four to six hours i'm actually going to let it go overnight we're going to turn it back over one more time here put the last of our rub on all right our london broil is rubbed it's marinated we're going to put the lid on this pyrex dish it's going to go in the refrigerator and I'll see you tomorrow when we head outside and smoke it on the Weber kettle. All right, our top round has been marinating overnight. I have the Weber kettle set up with the Vortex set for indirect. So let's get our meat on and make some smoked London broil. Now I want to get a temp probe in here, but in a thin cut of meat like this, this can be a little bit difficult. I've had mixed results with it, but I want to try and get a gauge as we're getting close to the temperatures we're shooting for. So we're going to do our best here. So here is something that can actually happen. My internal meat temperature probe just died. Not the sending unit, receiving unit, the actual probe. So I had to go grab my replacement unit. Let's get this in here. Again, this can be tricky in these thin cuts of meat. At best, it's going to be a guide. We're going to have to really probe this with the instant read to make sure. Okay, so we're showing an internal meat temperature of about 49 degrees. Perfect. It's been sitting out for about half an hour, coming up to a little closer to temp. So now it's time to get some wood on the vortex. Today I'm going to be using some post oak for smoke. So we're going to let that catch before we put our lid on and adjust our vents. It's looking good. All right, let's get our lid on. So I have my bottom vent set at the one third mark. Our top vent's at about three quarters, but I'm going to choke that down to about a quarter to a third right now. Because there was just a big burst of air getting into the cooking chamber with that charcoal. So it's going to race up for a little bit. Let me show you what I mean. See, there are meat temps at 53, but look at the kettle temp, 350. That rush of oxygen just lets that charcoal take off. 
So we're gonna give this a few minutes to sort of moderate and start coming down. Then I'll be happy where we're at. So with the bottom vent at one third and the top vent at one third, I'm shooting for about a 300 degree temperature in the kettle today. I'm gonna to be doing this smoked London broil similarly to a tri-tip. I'm gonna take it to about 110 internal temperature, then I'm gonna sear it, and then I'm gonna put it back on the indirect side and I'm gonna take it to 135, not 130 like I would with a tri-tip. It really shouldn't take that long today, no more than an hour. So I'll bring you back when we're ready to sear this. Okay, so our internal meat temperature is 107. Our kettle temps, 279, a little lower than the 300. I want it, but that's all right. This, again, a, a London broil type cook on here is not gonna take long. It's been about 25 minutes, so it moved pretty quick. It's a very thin cut of meat just really want to try and get a little bit of smoke flavor on it with this post oak. So we're coming up on that 110, we're at 109 right now, so we're going to get ready to sear this. Let's flip our wing down here, get our temperature probe out of there. Let's give this a quick sear on each side. Not going to be long, just a little bit on each side. All right, let's turn this over. Just a minute, and then we're gonna move it back to indirect. All right, let's move this back to indirect. Try and get our temperature probe back in the same place. Okay, our internal meat temperature after the searing is reading 120. We got 15 degrees to go. Let's get this covered back up. Okay, so I am at an internal temperature of 132. Target is 135, but I want to start probing it right now. So let's see how we're doing here. 133, 134, 134.4. Yep, 135. <laughs> 135.1, we're right on it. We're gonna take this off, get it inside, and have a taste. All right, here is our smoked London broil. It's been resting for about 10 minutes. These I find you don't need to let them rest, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes, anything like that. Just give it, you know, 10, 15 minutes just to sort of reabsorb any juices that are there. But let's see what we've got here. Good color on it. I'm just going to cut straight across the grain right here. We'll even cut across this little piece on the side. Oh, look at that. Really nice color there. Really nice color. I'm gonna cut a slice right here. Actually, I'm gonna cut a couple slices so I can <laughs> maybe have an extended taste today. Just what I wanted, medium rare, look at that. All right, it's time for some tasting. All right, I wanna see if you can see this. You can see that beautiful medium rare color in there. So with a top round, I'm just gonna call it London broil because that's what you're gonna see it marketed as in the store. With a London broil, give it some time, marinate it, give it those six hours to overnight, and give it a little bit of time on the grill. Don't just throw it directly over the coals. Give it some indirect time because you can get these results. Let's check the taste and the tenderness. Now, it's not tri-tip tender. It's not brisket tender, but it is tender for a top round. Giving it that little bit of time indirect, then searing it, then a little more time indirect to finish off allows you to achieve a little bit more tenderness than you normally would. And the flavor from that marinade overnight Perfect. Oh, remember, this is a very lean cut of meat generally. You'll have fat around the outside, but inside the structure is basically meat. Not a lot of marbling. That's why you use a cut like top round at times for making beef jerky, because you don't have that fat in there that can turn rancid after you dry it. So you can be competing against the toughness of this meat. 
but you can also beat it. Mm. Perforating it with that tenderizer as I did helps with the flavor penetration. I don't know how much that actually helps with tenderness on this, but it definitely allowed that marinade and those seasonings to get deeper into the meat. There is flavoring throughout this meat. Mm. So if you see a London broil in your store, remember it's top round, and remember with a little bit of time, a little bit of smoke, you can get excellent results with it.